it's time for another episode of GHP. If you haven't heard the podcast before, thanks for joining us, and here's how it works. First, we cover Humans Are Cool, which is where we count down our top three picks of good news or interesting facts about specific people or our species as a whole. Then, we join the Learning Bunch to run an experiment about human nature in a way that the kids at home can participate. Welcome to Gabe's Humanizing Podcast. So let's get started with Humans Are Cool. We'll count down our top three picks this week, starting with number three. Question for you. How can we help alleviate the challenges that parents and teachers face with virtual schooling? Robin Hennig, a writer for The Atlantic, suggests looking to the elderly. In her words, it's a win-win since grandparents are most likely more available to help with schooling schedules than parents. A new startup community has launched specifically with this mission. Eldera, as it's called, recruits mentors above 60 years old and pairs them with children from ages 5 to 15 on weekly Zoom calls that focus on where the children need help. Our number two spot this week goes to Brad Hathaway, an 88-year-old man from Mattapoisett, Massachusetts. Back in 1988, Brad began reaching for a new life goal. Or should I say walking for a new life goal? 32 years later, he's walked over 24,000 miles. That's the equivalent of nearly walking the circumference of the Earth. Brad's gotten together with the Mattapoisett Land Trust. There's been a GoFundMe page set up for Brad to raise money on behalf of the MLT in an effort to help the MLT acquire the area near Brad's walking path, known as Sousa Farm, to protect it from development. With only a few miles to go, the GoFundMe will raise $24,000 for the 24,000 miles Brad walks. We're rooting for you, Brad. And the number one pick this week goes to Luca Citaro and Fabio Bottusi, a pair of professors at the University of Udine, Italy. The recently published research paper featured the first massive study of games for learning, where over 425,000 global players speaking over 40 languages participated in playing their free app called Prepare for Impact. The research focused on a notoriously difficult educational goal, teaching the general public about the safety procedures during aircraft emergencies. Luca explained, to explore a novel way of teaching safety we created a mobile game that provides players with a first-person experience that challenges them to realistically survive major types of emergencies, such as in-flight decompression, water landing, crash landing, and fire. Various metrics showed significant improvement in players' knowledge after playing. The study also focused on the possible role of making errors in the game, linking them to improvement in safety knowledge. Luca leaves us with an interesting thought. He says, turning failure into an expected and even desirable event is a very interesting feature of using games for learning. While making errors in a traditional classroom environment is an unpleasant experience, a well-designed game environment encourages learners to explore what-if scenarios that make players curious about what will happen when they make mistakes. Hmm, this gives me an idea. Let's check in with Marie and the Learning Bunch. Marie, are you there? Yes, you've caught me after my morning tea. Wouldn't want to catch me during, you know. <laughs> I can only imagine. So here's the question I have for you to investigate with the Learning Bunch this week. Do humans learn more quickly from failures or from successes? Love it! Let's reconnect at the end. I can't wait to hear about your findings. Good luck. Hello, Learning Bunch. Hi, Marie. Oh, hi, Marie. How is everyone? Good, good. Oh, good over here. Hey, just a heads up, everyone. I'll be gone next week for my anniversary. You're married? Sure am. Oh, how lovely. And how did you two meet? We bumped into each other at the wonderful world of weevils at the city's Beetle Conservatory. There's a Beetle Conservatory? Sure is. Creepy. Well, not really. Let me put it this way. Butterflies get their own. Why can't beetles? Ah. 
Okay, you got me there. Gentlemen, it's time to do this week's experiment, so let's focus. James is at... Wait, where's Kelly? Probably off working with some super genius like Einstein. That's enough, Freddy. Kelly, are you there? <laughs> we can barely hear you, dear. You're coming in a bit choppy. This is already questionable. I can't wait to hear what she's up to. There. Is that better? Yes. We can hear you now. How are you? Good. Hi, everyone. Hey, Kelly. Kelly, what are you up to this week? Oh, I'm just in the 10th dimension, introducing Albert Einstein to string theory so he can complete his work unifying gravity and electromagnetism. What? You're with Einstein. Yeah. In an alternate dimension. The 10th. How? While we have this opportunity, may we speak with him, dear? Actually, I made the mistake of showing him Pinterest earlier, and I haven't been able to pull him away from it since, so he's a bit busy right now. I see. Well, maybe later. Pinterest even gets the best of Einstein. That's the best thing I've heard all year. Oh, and who can blame him? It has all those brilliant ideas for holiday decorations, desserts, home decor, dinners, and oh, not to mention beautiful fashion ideas for the summer, spring, fall, and winter, and my goodness, for Einstein hairstyle ideas, and... <clears throat> Focus, everyone. James has given us the question for this week. Well, let's hear it. All right, here it is. Do humans learn more quickly from failures or from successes? Ooh, ah. I like it. So here is what I thought we could do as our experiment. Each of you, go ahead and quickly grab something that makes sound when you play it, like an instrument. Maybe a whistle or a plastic cup. It's your choice, so be creative. We're going to play a game with them. Kids at home, that means you too. And don't forget to get permission from your parents before you take the item. And, if you don't have anything you can use, don't worry. You can just clap your hands. I'll wait here while you get the item you want to use. Alright everyone, what did you pick? I got a cardboard box. I got a plastic cup. Well, I'm in another dimension, so I'll clap. And kids, what did you pick? That's perfect! Right then, here's how the game is going to work. First, you're all going to listen to a drum beat. Then each of you are going to be assigned a part of the beat to play on your objects. Understood so far? Yeah. yeah. No, but keep going. I'll pick up on it. That's the right attitude, Freddy. The point of the game is to see how quickly we can recreate the beat together. Afterward, we'll ask each other if we learned more quickly from our failed attempts or our successful ones. Ready to play? Sure, <laughs> that sounds fun. fun. Here's the drum beat. Okay, now Johnny, you're going to play your cup at the same time that you hear this sound. Got it. Freddy, you'll play on this sound. I'm starting to see where this is going here. And Kelly, you'll clap on this sound. Kids, go ahead and pick which sound you want to play on. Everyone ready? Here we go! Oh, not there. Oh. Kelly. This is hard. Oh boy. Ha. Getting better. Now we're getting it. What did you think? That was like super fun. Yeah, I really enjoyed that one. And we all know Freddy definitely did too. What can I say? I was feeling it, man. <laughs> Good. So, let's go around now and talk about the results.
Kelly, let's start with you. Did you learn faster from making mistakes or from successes each time? That's like really hard to say. Because the mistakes made me notice that I was doing wrong. But the successes helped me realize when I was right. Yeah, I felt the same. Right? So it's almost like you can't have one without the other. I've heard that failure used to be considered a hurtful word, but it doesn't seem like that's the way it should be perceived. How so, Freddy? Well, if all of us agree that both failures and successes are necessary for us to learn more quickly, wouldn't that mean we should encourage failure as a positive thing in life to learn from and grow? Oh, great point, friend. I think so. There's one more thing to remember about what we did, though. We didn't give up, so we gave ourselves the chance to learn from each failure and success. Giving up on something would take that opportunity away. So, is it fair to say that what we've noticed here today is that both failures and successes are necessary for learning? And we might have found even a third key element to learning. Persistence. Sounds right to me, Marie. What about you, Mr. Einstein? He nodded. He still won't put Pinterest down. Goodness! If Einstein thinks we're on track, I'd say that bodes pretty well for us. Yes. That's so cool. Very well. Let's check back in with James. James, we're ready to report. Great, let's hear it. We did a wonderfully fun experiment today where we created a drum beat by each of us taking turns playing on certain beats at the right time. And we kept attempting to play it, mistakes and all, until we got it right. That sounds like a very smart way to test this question. Thank you. I do have my moments, don't I? Well, what we found was that both failures and successes are necessary for learning. We also uncovered a third element, which is persistence. Remaining persistent will lead to growth as you gain more knowledge from each failure and success. And failure is no reason to walk away from an attempt at learning. Just as success is no reason to stop attempting to learn. Wow, this was a great result. Thank you so much as usual, Learning Bunch. You're all awesome. We were practically perfect in every way. Take care now. Bye, Bye James. James. Bye, James. All right, listeners, that's it for today's episode. We'll be back next week to have some fun with the Learning Bunch, and we send a big thank you to Seymour for providing the research and news articles for Humans Are Cool. If you have a great positive story about a person or group being cool in the world and would like it featured on Humans Are Cool, please email us at gabeshumanizingpodcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear it, and we would love to share it. And remember to please take a minute to subscribe to the podcast and follow us on social media. You can find us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm James P. Castor. Until next time, take care and stay human. Agent Darling. Hello, Agent. It's Freddy. This had better be good. The FBI doesn't have time for games. Oh, it's good. I need you to check into someone named Kelly.